Hey! Hi, this is Dr. Christine. And Dr. Colin. And we are your co-hosts for the exciting new podcast called Love, Love Scrubs, Scrubs, and Stories, where we dive deep into the world of dating and relationships and go beyond the people wearing the white coats, the scrubs, and the stethoscopes. Come join us on this journey where we engage in dialogue and share stories of love, heartbreak, resilience, and triumphs. And we also navigate our professional lives with our hearts on our sleeves. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to stay up to date on all future episodes. And, and we, we look, look forward, forward to, to seeing, seeing you inside. inside. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Love, Scrubs, and Stories podcast. I am your co-host, Dr. Christine Nguyen. And with me is my amazing, amazing co-host, the one and only, the chef doc, Dr. Colin Zhu. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited to be here to bring you another amazing episode what do we talk about here on this podcast? We talk about dating, we talk about relationships, all from the perspective of our community, the healthcare professionals. Colin, awesome. how are you doing? How are you doing today? I'm super, I'm doing great. I'm super excited for this episode. I'm super excited. We are always excited for every single episode, but for this particular one, we're even more excited. So guys, if this is your first time to this channel and podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow along for updates. So what are we talking about today, Christine? We are talking about the, the specialty of lifestyle medicine that is near and dear to my heart and your heart and our very good friend that we'll be introducing in a little bit. So Colin, lifestyle medicine was very, you know, was new to me. And, and I was like presented, you know, First time I even heard about what lifestyle medicine was, was in 2020, about uh, right after the quarantine. And I was like, what is this? And I was very interested. And when I heard about it and heard what it's all about, I was like, this totally aligns with, you know, the way that I would like to practice and also the way that I would like to live my life. So you are... And, and when I, you know, finally got the chance to meet you and connect with you, and I heard about all the amazing work that you're doing in lifestyle medicine, and you've been doing this for like so many years. So I thought you'd be the perfect person to introduce to our audience for those that may not have heard of lifestyle medicine, what lifestyle medicine is all about and why it's <laughs> so amazing and why we love talking about lifestyle medicine so much. Yes, yes. And we promise that it will relate to relationships. We, you know, we'll get to that. So lifestyle medicine, for those of you who are listening, consists of six pillars. And it is a evidence-based profession and specialty using approaches to prevent, treat, and reverse chronic lifestyle-related diseases, risk factors, all the things that permeate throughout our health and well-being, every type of specialty, subspecialty, you know it, you know, things like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and it's really going back to the roots at the end of the day. It's not really rocket science, but it is a whole bunch of science, uh, mountain loads of science as a backing and foundation. And it's not as simple as moving more and eating less. There's way more to it. And for this particular episode, we're going to be talking about connectiveness, connections, community, and relationships, right? That's the core of, you know, our podcasts. And from the angle of how does lifestyle medicine affect relationships in general? There was a great, great uh, Harvard study in adult development, one of the longest ones, 75 years plus out in Harvard that said that the quality of your relationships, okay, is a positive predictor of your overall health and longevity. And since then, it's been studied and followed for multiple generations after that. So what that basically means is that I would actually rank relationships as number one. So as much as I love Absolutely. food, <laughs> as much as I love food, it's really about, you know, the quality of your life is dictated by the quality of your relationships. If you listen to our last episode, you know, episode 14, you know, we talked a lot about that as well. But in this particular episode, we have a great guest, but kicking it back to you, Christine, how, uh, how have you kind of looked at your relationships through the lens of, you know, lifestyle medicine? Do you have more of an emphasis of self-care, you know, look at how well you do practice effective communication? Like, how do you, you know, use this context? Absolutely. And lifestyle medicine applies to everything. Like I see lifestyle medicine as not just self care, but whole care is, is how I would like to see it. So it's about the care that we take ourselves, uh, you know, within ourselves, the care, you know, you know, within like our, our relationships 
the care within our patients, the care within our our community. And so I think that if we apply those principles that will optimize the our relationships. So like, for example, like, and you know, like how you show up on a date, you know, or how you show up on your day-to-day interaction with your partner is, you know, really just, it all comes back to lifestyle medicine, right? If you don't, you know, provide your body with adequate nutrition, if you don't uh, get adequate sleep, you're not going to be your very best self, you know, and you're not going to be able to be that, that, you know, that, you know, that person that you'd like to be in that relationship, Mm -hmm. or you show up to a date, and you're just so, you know, exhausted and full of energy and, and negativity, potentially, you know, when you don't, you know, are not able to sleep well or not, you know, feeding your body well, and you're not getting a regular physical activity. So that really, like, all that can bleed into your, your dating and your relationship. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. How about For you? Sure. How about you, Colin? How has it impacted your dating and relationship journey? Today. Well, I never actually had to think about how, you know, my own profession would, you know, affect, uh, you know, <laughs> using it in one sentence, right? Like, how does lifestyle medicine affect your dating life? I've always thought of it as if I don't take care of myself, I honestly wouldn't date myself, right? Like, and this goes mm, more toward, you know, goes with, point. that mm-hmm. goes with, you know, mental, emotional, and physical, right? I have to make sure that all these are optimized as much as possible and that they're aligned. And, you know, we talk a little bit about, you know, law of attraction, you know, in different spurts. We talk about mindset, you know, the last episode we talked about mindset and it's really about, you know, would you date yourself at the end of the day, right? And I that love that. Partner, <laughs> That partner, you know, you want to attract, you know, you have to be that partner first, right? So, so yeah, that's how I would frame it in my head. So, absolutely, absolutely. So, shall we bring on our amazing guest, our dear, wonderful friend? <laughs> yes. The honor of introducing him. Come. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, basically, we are uh, bringing Dr. John McHugh. Uh, his bio is written from a first per- person perspective. So I'm going to flip all this. So he ra- was raised as a devout Irish Catholic boy in a family of six. And he initially wanted to become a priest. He received a scholarship to Columbia in New York City and became very, very passionate in science and taught at, in the high school in New York City. With a medical doctor degree, he decided to teach science to young people, graduated from a Harvard slash MIT joint MD program, and OBGYN was a place in medicine where he felt that young adults could make life-changing decisions. And then he further trained at University of California, San Francisco, moved to San Diego, and became department chair of that community hospital, and then spent the next decade in the executive suite working with leaders on improving quality of care. And so he got into lifestyle medicine because he met Dr. Michelle Tollefson at his first American College of Lifestyle Medicine conference. And together, they formed the Women's Health uh, Member Interest Group, which uh, has grown to almost 900 members. His current interest is going, quote unquote, upstream and understanding the fundamental motivators of health, especially sleep and behavioral medicine. So without further ado, please welcome John. Hey, Hi. hey how are you guys doing? Great. Well, well, welcome to the Love and Scrubs and Stories podcast. It's about time you came on. I don't know what took so long. <laughs> so <laughs> happy to be here. All right. Boy, it was really hard for me to listen to you two because I had so many things. I, and I'm sure many of the listeners feel the same way. Boy, I want to talk more about that. Boy, that was interesting. So many great points <laughs> you brought up. Yes, <laughs> yes. Let's dig deeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. and Colin and I are especially, you know, really looking forward to this episode because, you know, we're all in the world of lifestyle medicine and we're like, I can't wait to nerd out on lifestyle medicine. <laughs> and so, and especially for me, you know, and, and what you do, John, um, your work in women's health. So we'd like to, you know, really get into all that and love to hear your perspective, all the great work you're doing um, to educate our community and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's start off. The first question is, how did you, you know, can, how did you, we talked about how you got into lifestyle medicine, being that you are in the specialty of OBGYN, very passionate about women's health. Why apply lifestyle medicine to this specialty, right? Why is it, why is that, why was that important for you? And what kind of impact do you hope to make with it? Well, you know, what I'm trying to channel back to for the listeners is what was it like before I got started? Because now 
I can hardly read a journal article without thinking, boy, they need more lifestyle medicine than that. Boy, they jump straight to pills and procedures and not thought about the foundation of health, right? They skip it all the time. When I went to my first meeting, I had coffee with Dr. Michelle Tollefson, and she said, there's so much work in diabetes and hypertension, and we know we can take people off all their medications in, in those cases. But look at preeclampsia. I mean, preeclampsia affects one in seven pregnancies, and it's basically a condition that's highly linked to diabetes and hypertension. So if it works for our adult male patients, couldn't it work for women? And the reality is it does, it works so well. So many other conditions, polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometrial cancer. I mean, we're really not addressing the foundations of these conditions. And we can help so many people, so many women and their family. That's amazing on, on all the data and some of the examples that you provided already. What work, uh, specific interests that you, know, you have that you've been working towards currently, John? Sure, I, I'd say a lot of the work that we did was preeclampsia. And, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about my partner who herself had severe preeclampsia, almost died of it in pregnancy. And, uh, you know, when, she, when I went through that story for her, years of treatment and being worked on, no one ever addressed the foundations. We now know sleep is incredibly important to preeclampsia. We know that diet, exercise, stress reduction are incredibly important. But when I look at the ACOG prenatal form, we don't ask about sleep. We treat it like it's, uh, you know, and, and every pregnant woman I've ever seen, and many of your listeners probably feel this way, they just assumed that was nine months of bad sleep. It shouldn't be that way. Right? Mm. So are there other types of, like, those are great examples. Are there other types of common myths and misconceptions about lifestyle? I mean, about women's health that you would like to debunk, you know, using lifestyle medicine? Well, I'd say that the, the, because lifestyle medicine extends into all parts of our lives, it's something that everybody can participate in, right? So uh, one of the papers we wrote was about kind of changing the whole family's dietary pattern and how you can gradually bring, often the men are the ones that are dragging their feet saying, you know, I, I need to make sure I get my steak and my protein with every meal, right? So bringing that whole family along. But I'd say you can't even start to address this if you don't start talking about it. And I think, Colin, thanks for your uh, your gracious introduction. I grew up in a in an Irish Catholic family and one of my aunts died of ovarian cancer. Mm. And no one could ever, that was a, no one could talk to a man about that because it was a, a woman's disease. There was mm. shame about talking about anything that had to do with, you know, the uterus tubes or ovaries. So we have to, the first thing I think we have to do is start talking about it. And uh, too often, because a lot of women's health does relate to reproduction, we have a lot of social and cultural stigmas about it. And we mm. have to start opening up and talking. I'd say that's really the first thing to talk about. If I may, what is it, what are the barriers can we kind of like knock down, you know, that we could make it easier to have these conversations, right? Like you dis you you talked about the family discussions, right? So over time, do you feel like that has improved? Are there certain cultural examples that you can provide that in a way, right, maybe not their intention creates a barrier that we can somehow circumvent? Like what are we what do we need to do to kind of open up and unblock these barriers so we can have these discussions? How much time did we have four or five hours? <laughs> <laughs> I could go all day on this. Uh, we actually did a we actually did a great paper uh, looking at some of the issues all around the world. The highest increase right now in uh, obesity, diabetes, metabolic disease is in the Middle East, right? The Gulf states, mm -hmm. Dubai. And think about it there. Uh, women often are, um, for cultural reasons, wearing outfits that they really couldn't exercise in. The, the outside temperature, especially with climate change, is going through the roof. In our big cities in America, think about if you worked a long day, you get home after dark, and then you want to exercise. What do you do? So these are huge problems. Right in Los Angeles, uh, a good friend of mine, Diana Ramos, is now the Surgeon General for California, really focusing on women's health. And I'm, I'm encouraging her to focus on just fixing the sidewalks in Los Angeles. I think they have a 10-year backlog. Think about living in, a, in an inner city neighborhood and you can't even walk safely on the streets. Tons of things we can do to make it safe for people to get outside and get some fresh air. Yeah. 
I think a lot of these discussions kind of have to come back to policy. There was a new, there was a recent documentary um, on Netflix called The Blue Zones, Living to 100. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. Dan Buettner, who is the architect of the entire, you know, his project, which is like a couple of decades now, he's kind of using using the concepts of people who live the longest to is retrofit the the proper word, <laughs> but uh, to to basically transform the original yeah, city sure. to something that is more accessible to to your point John you know increasing access right increasing mm-hmm. these options mm-hmm. of being able to partake you know a simple example would be i went to rio brazil and mm-hmm. a beautiful beautiful town you know obviously mm-hmm. it's n- known for carnival but what i was really impressed upon was the fact that if you go along the coastline Every, I kid you not, probably every, you know, 500, 200, maybe like 500 feet, there would be a gym just outside, you know, yeah. like a, an actual gym. And now I'm not talking about a children's playground. I'm talking about an actual gym that everyone can freely use and are not complicated machines, you know, like LA fitness or 24 hour fitness, you know, they're simple machines that people can freely use. And that's set there by the government. So yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. You know, I'll just tell you a little bit of a side. A good friend of mine is now on the board of a nursing home and talking about, we've been talking a lot about forest bathing. You've probably heard about this concept and the benefit of just being out in nature, but how many nursing homes have a place where somebody could just Mm -hmm. take their walker and do a little stroll? Right? Can we re-engineer these places to do it? That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, using all these principles of lifestyle medicine that you know we're talking about, John, how what would you like for our audience to understand about women's health that they may need to take more seriously in regards to their relationships? You know, which is the focus of our podcast. Sure. And you know, one thing, Christine, and, and you and Colin know this well. Sometimes when I say to people, "I'm doing lifestyle medicine." They think I'm doing, there's a slang term called woo-woo. Have you ever heard that? (laughs) (laughs) And we're not doing woo-woo, right? We're doing evidence-based medicine and we think there's a real role for it. I would be uh, remiss if I didn't talk about HPV vaccination. This is part of traditional medicine, but certainly lifestyle medicine believes in just basic preventative care. And, you know, I the number of women who are now newly single at a later point in their life who probably should do it. I think it's really important. And it's great to get out there and, and do that and just not worry about that. Remember head and neck cancers, which are largely driven by lifestyle, smoking and drinking and some of these things can be largely prevented by vaccination. So we should try to optimize the lifestyle things we can uh, and then use traditional medicine, especially traditional preventative medicine whenever we can uh, as well. Other things that I think are really important are to really, as we talked about with communication, be open and honest with these things. I uh, used to ski with a woman who was in her 40s and uh, she had been uh, started to have irregular bleeding in her 30s. Brushed it off for a while, saw a few different doctors, tried a few different birth control pills. But after about a year, she found out she had advanced endometrial cancer. Mm. She was told to pack her bags, right? This is it. She got full treatment, got through it, made it. And this is why now she was skiing down. You guys know the run Cornice at Mammoth, which is just kind of double black straight down the hill, skiing down Cornice. And then she would also do rough water swimming with me in La Jolla Cove. So she got a new lease wow. of life, right? Wow. Because she finally got through the healthcare system and got the care she needed. So I think people have to be upfront and communicate. And I can't tell you how many patients I've had who had a regular bleeding that have tried to brush it under the rug for a while. And we now know, right, endometrial cancer is the most common reproductive tract cancer, and it's largely driven by diet and lifestyle, right? The Mm. same things that drive diabetes and hypertension or drive an endometrial cancer forward. We can address them. We can prevent it. We can help people live a long, happy life. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. The Love, Girls, and Stories podcast is a collaboration and co-production between The Chef Doc and White Coat Romance. The Chef Doc is a wellness platform that offers innovative approaches to thriving and offers a self-empowerment book, podcast series, on-demand masterclass series, as well as a brand new app. The app provides self-guided education such as food as medicine, self-care, and resilience. Coaching services are also available, whether you prefer one-on-one or group type settings. Please go now to your app store, as well as Apple as Google Play to download for free.
White Coat Romance is a dating app for healthcare and health-related professionals and students in the U.S. and Canada. It's a lively space where you can find love, companionship, and build meaningful connections with like-minded professionals. If you're single, go to the App Store and Google Play to download and join our vibrant community. As we both serve these amazing communities, we also acknowledge the value of continuing education. Therefore, we're super excited to share an enticing opportunity with our listeners. Our episodes are continuing education eligible. That's right. You now have the opportunity to earn valuable credits while enjoying our content. Rest assured, the episodes will always remain free as we are committed to supporting our communities and amplifying the voices of healthcare professionals. To get a better understanding of how this works, the first three episodes are free to obtain, then the rest of the podcast episodes are at a nominal cost. So you might be asking who can earn credits? Well, physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians associates, pharmacists, dentists, as well as dietitians and dietetic technicians. If you find yourself in need of CE credits, we kindly ask you to consider directing your CE funds towards supporting our cause. Your contribution would greatly help us nurture our podcast production and continue to bring you valuable content. We are deeply grateful for your support. From all of us here at Love Scrubs and Stories Podcast, thank you so much for choosing us. And enjoy the rest of this episode. I do want to ask before we go on to the next question is if you had, if I gave you like a magic wand, Right. And I said, John, you know, if you had to take a magic wand and you can, you know, change something, right? Like today, because you had told me about the prenatal forms. They don't even ask about sleep, like something yeah, as simple yeah. as that. Right. Uh, like, what would you change? Right. If I gave you that magic wand, what would you would like to see to kind of improve the outcomes, you know, for women's health? Wow. Well, I'll tell you, and this would apply to everything, but I could, I could go on about the specifics in women's health. Why isn't fiber? a macronutrient. So when I talk to people out in the regular world, it just happened today, I ordered a salad for lunch and the server said, but don't you want any protein, right? And I'm thinking, you know, spinach, calorie for calorie has more protein than steak. I'm getting plenty of protein here. But people are all worried about that or people are worried, you you know, fats and carbs and whatnot. But 95% of Americans don't get basic amounts of fiber. And those basic amounts are probably way too low. We should probably get more with it. There's great data on preventing preeclampsia with fiber consumption, mm. right? Obviously, weight loss, I think if you, ne- if you don't get back to a diet with whole plant-based foods, you're never going to sustain weight loss. So why do I walk out all day long and get bombarded by the other three macros and nobody ever mentions fiber? So that's my magic wand. Is that to put, to put, you know, replace, you know, you know, what kind of protein you want to what kind of fiber you want, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you have that on the front label of all the, and it would be all the healthy plant-based foods, right? Yeah. But don't you find your friends are obsessed with the other macros and never think about fiber? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. People forget about the fiber. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. John, I'm going to get personal on you here, if that's okay. Yeah, please. Since, you know, stories is part of our name of this podcast, you know, you know, we'd like to know, um, how have you applied lifestyle medicine to your dating and relationships journey? And perhaps you have a story that you'd like to share with us? Sure. I would be happy to share a, a story. I'll, I'll tell you a, a story of my current relationship, if, if that's uh, if that's good. It may not be that, well, I, it's a pretty good story. I, I, yeah, I, do it. So we love we that story. <laughs> you know, I was uh, single for a long, long time. I was engaged once when I was in residency, but it really wasn't the right relationship for us to do. But then, let me think about how long ago this was, maybe five, six years ago, a friend of mine who was working a high-level corporate job said, John, I'm quitting my job, I'm moving to Breckenridge, and I'm just going to live out there, and I'm going to run this matchmaking service from my home. I've got one problem. From like the ski resort, she's going to become a ski bum and, you know, and just run a service. I uh, I need a few more men of a certain age. And, <laughs> you know, Colin, you'll get there someday, right? You'll realize what it's like someday. And I, I said, sure. She said, here's how we'll do it. I'll set everything up. You just have to go out. These are, these are um, very busy, professional, achieving women. They'll love you. You have an Ivy League pedigree, et cetera, et cetera. Be a, be a total gentleman. Take them out to dinner and I'll take care of the rest. And I said, I'll give it a try. It was hard for them, for her, to match me 
because I didn't have a very specific physical description of a type. And some men do, I guess. I don't know. No, um, that's great. You're very open. So I, I, I finally came to this kind of realization. The term I used was, I said, you know what? How about a bond girl, right? <laughs> bond girl is really resourceful, has her stuff together, looks great. But, you know, if you've watched any James Bond movies, they can be all across, all different ethnicities, ages, you know, it's, 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 it's more of a personality type, mm. right? So you see that. So that finally kind of lit off a little bit of a light bulb. And, mm, the uh, adventure, always ready yeah. to go, you know, like live life to the fullest. Live life to the fullest, right? Live it up and, and really make the most of life. And someone who you, you know, if the, if the car had a flat tire in the middle of Namibia, you feel like I'm with somebody, we can get through this together, right? We can do it. So she set me up with, woman who I met, and I had gotten to the point where I said, you know what, these aren't working out. I'm just going to meet for drinks. I met her for a drink, and within about five minutes, I said, can we, do you want to, can we just turn this into dinner? Because I'm going to want to stay here longer. Uh, we turned it into dinner, and I she went through the service herself because, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners have this issue, it's risky as a woman going out and meeting somebody from an app, an online profile, not not, of course, a curated list of gentlemen who are on your app, but, you know, Tinder or whatever these things are that the young people use. these. Yes, it's, it can be very scary. I mean, safety is a real concern for a lot of women. So a lot of, you know, a lot of us are not like so quick to like want to like meet you right away. And the men are like, let's meet right away. We're like, who are you? Are you going to are you a serial killer? I need to roll that out first, you know, among other things, <laughs> among a long list of other things. Anyway, so sorry to continue, John. Oh, no, no. Thanks. Yeah. So she said, so her decision was, you know, in a, in a business job, she's an MBA. She would have just outsourced this job because it's not her skill set. And that's what she did. She outsourced it to my friend, the matchmaker. We got set up and I had to obviously be vetted and checked out and whatnot and presumably passed all those tests. I think probably the reality was neither of us were really ready to, to be together forever at that point. She had been, she was coming out of a 20 year marriage herself. And I was thought of myself as an eternal bachelor. So we went on and off for a, a few years, and then about a year and a half, almost two years ago, kind of decided to to get back and, and make it a little bit more real. So that's what we've been doing. Oh, that's so amazing! Yeah. I love that, John. Yeah. So, so that your, yours is like slow cooking for a little bit, using cooking analogies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> using cooking analogies, exactly. <laughs> yours is on the crock pot, you know. You know, crock. Track, so that's. <laughs> Absolutely. It was simmering. It was simmering. <laughs> well, I, but don't you feel that way in relationships? Sometimes when someone's kind of rushing too much to a specific goal, it gets hard to get to that goal. I think I think you make a you make a very good point is where this is where the generations differ because you know, not to not to put a you know put a spotlight in terms of age and, and generations, but it's more a reflection of like how our society works, yeah. and we are more accustomed to things that are more immediate. You know, we live in a paradox of choice. We're not patient, right? We we don't give people the time of day. There's no you know Venn diagram of a situation to really sit down and connect with someone. Right. Yeah. We immediately prejudge them based off of, I don't know, certain stats, numbers, their face, certain dress. Right. They have a pimple. Right. Like stuff like yeah. that, like something totally ridiculous, as opposed to asking, can this person, you know, conflict, you know, resolute with me? Right. Can't, you know, how are they at their lowest of lows? Right. Do they yeah. accept me? Right. For all that I am. Right. Like things like that. Right. The real so stuff. I think, um, yeah, the real stuff. Right. So, yeah. So you, you point out a really good point and I'm glad that it took time for you because it's not, you know, it's not the, how fast you win a race, right. It's the quality. It's that marathon, so to speak. The slow burn. I think the that's the crock yeah, pot. I think the that's crock the, pot. <laughs> the, or the crock pot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think the slow burn, I, I'm more and more convinced, you know, on the slow burn rather than that intense, immediate chemistry right off the bat. Although that is such a great feeling, of course. So, so John, when, when you met, you know, your, your lovely lady, did you, did you throw a medical pickup line on her or, or, or was that <laughs> or like at some point I, I would imagine like, you know, you love to joke around 
it, you know, we, we know you as like this fun guy. I would imagine. This is the only cheese we advocate. <laughs> you know, Do you know, share? <laughs> no, you know, I, you know, I, interesting. You know, I, I want to tell you if I can two stories, two stories really quickly. Do it. Do um, it. The story was um, that did happen very early on in our first day. It was not a pickup line, but we were talking about vacations. And I had done a vacation with a company called Swim Trek. And if it, either of you have ever heard of it, it's a open water swimming company based out of England. They go all around the world and they take people on these swimming vacations. And you basically um, do a nice two, three hour swim in the morning. And then in the afternoon, you dig for clams and have a clam bake with beer on the beach or something like that. It's a beautiful, beautiful group. Turned out she had just asked about, tell me about a great vacation you did. And I told her about it. And she had been dreaming about doing a vacation like this for years. So so we're probably going to do it next year. We're going to do a swim trek, island hop in Greece. Just go from island to island. Uh, Whoa, that's to amazing. Oh, God. So, so that's what worked out. But I do want to tell you another story that I, I think um, is maybe even more interesting with this. I remember I was a working class guy. My family were uh, Philadelphia school teachers. The doctor's kids lived in another neighborhood. I mean, we thought people like that, once you go to medical school, right, you've got it made. Everything's going to be on the easy street. And after college, I was working as a high school teacher in New York. Another guy like me, uh, his parents were electricians, worked side by side. And he, he and I went out and had a beer and he struck out with some girl. And he said, you know what, John? In four years, I'm going to have the best pickup line ever. <laughs> I'm Joe Thompson, MD. Right. And we both thought that we thought once we get that degree, the world's going to be at our feet. Right. I mean, you know, because this is what you see on General Hospital and, and TV shows. Right. Well, we learned a lot after we got out of medical school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work out. Quite that I mean, I, I know, Colin, does that ever work for you to just walk in and say, hey, I'm Dr. Colin Jew and the women just. Uh, honestly, I like my ego to kind of fit through the door. Right. So <laughs> I don't really lead with that. And also, I don't really want to try go diggers. So uh, so, no, I don't actually lead with that. <laughs> but I get oh, I, I get what goodness. you're saying. And yeah, there is a preconception of how things are, you know, I guess, uh you know, noted in our society. So, and for some, it works, you know, I just, you know, it's not the crowd that I want. So <laughs> I just have to tell you it's one side story. I was, uh, you've seen this movie, Eyes Wide Shut. Tom yes. Cruise, oh, that's with uh, his ex-wife. Right, Nicole Kidman, right? He and yeah. Nicole Kidman made it. Mm -hmm. In the movie, he's a physician. And a number of times he's sort of trying to get access, trying to get into something. And he, pull, he apparently has his medical license in his wallet. And he just pulls it out and flashes it. And, all the doors open up to. I don't think I've ever seen that in real life, but I think that's the idea <laughs> in the in the popular culture, right? That once you, have, you, know, you have your medical you license guys. in your wallet, you just got to flash it out like that. Who even carries it anymore? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, John. Well, as much as we always love, you know, enjoy talking to you and you know, and having you share these wonderful stories. What are the top key takeaways, like tips, specific tips that you have, you know, lifestyle medicine principles for the ladies? Applying it to their or women's health, health. Or, or men's health, and specifically in the realm of dating relationships. Yeah, sure. Well, the first tip I'm going to give, and I'm going to I'm going to direct this one directly at you, Christine. Come to Denver. Come to the ACLN meeting in Denver uh, at the end of October. I got to say, I remember Grand College of Lifestyle and Medicine. For those who don't know, come on out to that Lifestyle Medicine meeting. It was really my first meeting in Indianapolis. I can't remember what year that was. 2018. It was life changing. I remember the um, the men's room was on another floor where there was a meeting of guys my age who were computer guys doing some computer meeting. And the contrast, the health and well-being of the people at the lifestyle medicine meeting versus the computer programmers was night and day. And I felt mm -hmm. like, boy, I'm not, I found my people. I want to be with the healthy, just healthy, beautiful people, right? People look young and vibrant and fantastic. So, so tip that, one, go to conferences where there are healthy Fit. Tell 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 them what they serve at the conference, John. Tell and them what the they serve. Food at the is conference. incredible. Not only the food where you get special culinary medicine classes with Colin, but just the basic food uh, is unbelievably good, delicious. I could eat it all day long. Um, Sold. So, <laughs> so, tip one: go to the lifestyle medicine conference. 
Tip two, I'm still going to go back to my kind of more traditional roots. Take care of your preventative health, right? It's easy enough to, you can, in California, order STD testing online. Make sure if you're out there in the dating world, you're healthy, get, get HPV vaccinated and take care of those basic things. You know, get great birth control. I worked for years trying to provide birth control. Get something really good that works for you, too, is tip two that I would say. And tip three, I would say, I just see a lot of high-achieving professional women that really ignore sleep and stress. Look at their cell phone for half an hour before they try to fall asleep or leave the notifications on. I think, boy, that's really, there's sort of an epidemic of addiction to devices and notifications, and it's really taking away people's health. Uh oh. <laughs> Guilty over here. <laughs> you're, you're, you're calling me out over here. All right, keep going, John. All right, that's all good. <laughs> call to action. Like, call to action. I need to work do, you on. Have a, do you have like a resource, a website? I know you already did a call to action to the annual conference. Is there anything else you want people else to know to know more about you or find out more after the episode? Sure. So we developed. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, Women's Health Lifestyle Medicine. We're transitioning that to the new group leaders right now. So, but we do have some good information out there on Women's Health Lifestyle Medicine. So just add the at sign and then that as one big word. But I did provide a link. I don't know if you all are putting this in the show notes or anything that people can get. But my good friend, Maya Acosta, who's now the secretary, took over kind of my old job with the Women's Health Group. And I think, but Colin, I think you know Maya, correct? And and Christine, you know Maya? Mm -hmm. She has actually created a YouTube channel for people that she has interviewed specifically on women's health. So a lot of the other leaders, Dr. Amy Commander, who's done a lot of work on breast cancer and breast cancer prevention, all of those people, myself, I I was out there talking about preconception health. All of them are out there now. Oh, and can I mention that one last thing? Preconception health. Don't think about Mm. it. Right? Start making those changes now. I think some people wait until they start taking those prenatal vitamins to change anything. Time is now if you want to have a kid. Excellent. Oh, great. John, kids. it's been it's been such a great pleasure. Good to see you. We will see each other, you know, <laughs> at exactly IRL. one year, you know, from last year. <laughs> but yeah, um, this has been a great episode. Uh, I appreciate your work because honestly, OBGYN is one of the CS specialties, right? And to be able to integrate lifestyle medicine with all that, taking the time and day to go the extra mile to devote towards it, right, is really something. So I really commend you and applaud you for doing all this. So number one, I want to commend you and thank you so much for taking the time out to share with our audience members today. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you both for doing this great work. You're helping people's personal lives and their professional lives. It's very fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much. Christine, you want to close this out? Yeah. Yes. It's been a great episode. We have, you know, Dr. John McHugh here delivering lots of value and great insights. And it's been so much fun having you here. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. And don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell, follow us and to hear more amazing stories like Dr. John McHugh and our other guest experts and guests as well. And until next time, let's say goodbye to Dr. John McHugh. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. All right. See you soon. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this channel. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you felt like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. As a reminder, this channel does not offer medical advice. All opinions expressed are ours and our guests only. It is for general informational purposes only and does not replace professional healthcare services. Please consult your own healthcare provider for any medical issues you may have. Until the next episode, whether you're in and out of your scrubs, please remember to love yourself and others and lead with kindness. Bye. Bye.